for that music this morning. And did you notice in each song, the first song is Hallelujah, we praise the Lord. And the next song, we're talking about um, praising the Lord again. And then the next song, there's power in the blood. Do you believe there's power in the blood? Amen. 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 And then we're talking about Jesus coming again. And the last one there, I like to think of my prayer. It's beautiful words, Father God. Welcome, churches. Sweet Home and Eleven, and we're so happy you're here with us today. We praise the Lord together in this beautiful uh, scenery of nature. How wonderful is that? We have a few announcements. And um, first of all, did you hear about Barb and Sam Newton's accident? Yes. Yep. Does anybody know the status today? Are they're, they okay? They're home. They're home. Okay, awesome. So great. And, and poor Richie coming up on that accident. But praise God, they're okay. And Doreen has uh, two more major tests that she wanted me to share with you. She uh, is asking for prayer. And when she knows more, she'll be able to share more. And then, of course, Ernie's passing this week. You know, if I had my way, that's the way I would want to go. Amen. Just to have my last meal and sit in my chair. And then the next thing when Ernie wakes, he will see his lovely wife and his heavenly father. Amen. So keep the Schultes in your prayers. Also, um, before I go on to another announcement about that, the loose offering today will go to the North American Division Women's Ministries. So uh, if you have offering that you want to go to either the Sweet Home or Lebanon Church, please put it in the tithe envelope and mark it what church you want it to go to. Okay? So the um, Schulte family wanted... Um, me to share. You got the phone call this morning, but there's a little more that we need to add to that. And um, don't forget, if you're going to the home um, on Tuesday, then to bring a chair. And also, it might be a little delayed because they just don't know for sure what time they'll be back to the home. But there's a detour on Berlin Road. It's well marked. It's uh, just past Hamilton Creek School, probably add five or six minutes to travel time, or go out Highway 20 to Waterloo and turn off uh, the, the route to Berlin Road. And unless a person lives in the south end of town, Berlin is faster even with the detour. So, uh, Pastor has uh, some messages today and votes for Springfield, I mean, Sweet Home. Okay, so Sweet Home has a couple of readings that we haven't, we've just kind of been putting them off. So today is going to be the first reading. Uh, we have Bob Hunger for Sabbath School Superintendent. We have Barbara Newton for Church Clerk. And then we have a membership transfer to uh, Springfield for Nolan and Crystal Williams. Hate to have that happen, but anyway. And then uh, also want to remind everybody that prayer meeting this week will be at Bob, Bob, Don and Pat Bliss's house. And uh, so that's Tuesday evening at six o'clock. So that's the first reading. So we'll have the second reading next week. Okay. So today's program, as you know, we already had song service. We will have a children's story by Amanda. And then scripture and prayer will be by uh, Kristen and Carrie. <laughs> I almost forgot her name. I'm sorry. Kristen and Carrie. And then, of course, our sermon today is by Pastor Tim. So let's bow our heads as we ask the Holy Spirit to be with us. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, we are privileged to be at this beautiful spot today during this chaotic time so serene and so peaceful and we thank you for that father we praise you for the opportunity we have of sharing our testimony in our everyday walk we praise you for being 
our Lord and Savior, and our best friend. Heavenly Father, we just invite the Holy Spirit to be with us today. May our thoughts be focused totally on worship and the message that Pastor Tim has for us. We thank you for our pastors and for their families, Father. Pray that you will continue to be with them and guide them in the walk of life. Father, we love you, and we thank you for the opportunity again to be in your presence, in your loving name. Amen. All right, come grab a hula hoop. And this is a great problem to have. We don't actually have enough hula hoops, so just face yourself accordingly. <laughs> so, children. So they should go grab one and take it away. I need a volunteer. You don't have to sit in a chair like last week. Same volunteers? All right. Get up here. Here are the rules of today's game. I have to get out my stopwatch here. All right. Um, we will need some audience participation here because you all need to keep your hands and feet inside the ride. So please don't try to trip our contestants today. All right. You guys are going to see how fast you can run all the way around the outskirts of our... See, this is great. It says run in the sanctuary, and I'm like, ha, ah, we're outside. <laughs> So you guys are going to run all the way around all the people, around the back of this gazebo we thingy, around those people, and then back to me. All right? Can you do it? And this is where you guys come in. Don't trip them. That would be mean. All right. Are you ready? On your mark. <laughs> I love doing that. On your mark, get set, go. All right, go around. around. No bumping. No running into people. Maybe we shouldn't have had siblings do this. <laughs> All right, careful, good, around, around. We should have had you guys race pronto. Keep going, keep going, around, around, around. Excellent, oh, yep, there's people hiding in the shade, good. <laughs> All right, around, around. All right, come on, come on, wait for it, wait for it. And that's pretty much a tie. Nice job. 25 seconds. For the rest of you, you guys can try this during lunch if you'd like, I'll time you. All right, do you think that was fast or slow? You thought that was slow? What did you guys say? I thought that was fast. fast. I mean, that's a, if you look around here, we have actually a pretty big loop going right now. Justin, were you running fast or slow? He's still trying to breathe, so that must be fast. All right, so today, did you know there's a Bible verse about not running fast? Anyone else? It's not really about running, but it's about going slow. And it's in Psalms 116, 19, wait, 119, 60. And it says, I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands. Does anybody know what the word hasten means? Be quick, hurry, all right, excellent. So if we need to hasten and not delay, have you ever, have you ever delayed doing your chores? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or when mom says, you know, it's dinner time, and you're like, but the TV's still on. Have you ever done that? Let's be honest. Have we? I've done that, right? Um, what if your mom just calls your name? Normally, that means what? <laughs> I was going with normally they, they want you to come to them, right? Has that ever happened to you? Like, they just call you like, Ashley, and you just yell from the couch, what? Yeah, I've done that, personally. My mom always wanted me to come to her, apparently, when she said my name, not just yell from the other end of the house, what do you want? Um, so remember that. All right, so the verse is, I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands. So why do you think this verse is in the Bible? Because we need to obey God slowly or quickly? Quickly, excellent. So, where'd my spot Oh, you, you wrapped it up easy. You wrapped it up in fewer words than the book. Excellent job. So what are we going to remember today? You will... Wait, what's the word of the day now? We will hasten to obey. obey. And who should you obey? God and, God and your parents. All right. Nicely done. You may exit your hula hoop. Thank you for coming.
Does anybody have any prayer requests? But, yeah, besides the ones already mentioned. What? Say the what? Prayer request. Oh, yes. oh uh, Wanda Wareham. Her son was in an accident this week, and uh, they took out his spleen. He has nine broken ribs. He has a hole in his diaphragm, and a, a small, his small intestine is twisted. And so he really needs a lot of prayer. So for those of you who didn't hear her, um, Wanda Wareham's son was in an accident and um, yeah, he needs prayer. <laughs> the name's Randy. His name is Randy. Okay, her friends John and Stephanie have a lot of needs. Okay, um, for those of you who would like to, please kneel for prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you that we are able to get together and have church. Um, please be with all the prayer requests and um, please help um, it to be a good day. Amen. Today's scripture reading is Matthew 27, verse 22. Pilate said to them, What then shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said to him, Let him be crucified. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It is once again a, a blessing to be here to share God's word with us this morning. What a beautiful Sabbath day it is. I have been very much enjoying the sun. Uh, it reminds me of home. Uh, before uh, or before we go through, I thank the, the girls for reading and praying for our lesson this morning. Um, but I have, as my tradition, I would uh, always like to pray for the lesson again. So I will ask that you please uh, close your eyes, bow your heads for short prayer. Dear Jesus, our gracious Heavenly Father, we are about to learn uh, from your word Father, please be with me uh, as I uh, try to explain and read from our lesson today. And may you guide my poor English as I try to share. And may your spirit be present amongst us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I was looking through uh, some of my old sermons this week. And I came across a sermon that I heard a couple of years ago in college uh, on this, the, the text that uh, one of the girls have read from the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 22. So I decided that maybe I should um, preach on that uh, sermon that I heard in college. I thought it has a, a, a great lesson for us this morning. Matthew chapter 27, verse 11 to 22. Uh, we read of Jesus before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. Uh, and I know we are all familiar with this story. So while Jesus admitted to being the king of the Jews, he refused to answer the accusations of their chief priests and elders. You can find that in uh, chapter 27, verse 11 uh, to 12. 
And his silence caused Pilate to marvel greatly. Pilate sought to release Jesus, but the multitude asked for Barabbas instead. I'm just going through, summarizing through the well-known story of Jesus. So these prompted Pilate to ask the question that we have read in Matthew chapter 27, verse 22. And this is the topic of this sermon, this message. He said, Pontius Pilate said, what then shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? I thought, man, this is a good question for us to learn from this morning. And I repeat, what then shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? Pilate's question, what then shall I do with Jesus, is one that every person, every single one of us here, must ask. Many would prefer to ignore this question. Many try to let others make the choice as did Pilate in this story. But it is a question from which we cannot run away. We shall all one day stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 5 verse 10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one of us, you and me, may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. His words will be extended by which we will all be judged. Yeah, so first point, we shall all one day stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And his words, our words, will be the standard by which we will be judged. John chapter 12, verse 48 says, He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. And so each one of us should be asking ourselves this morning, what then shall I do with Jesus? Seems to be a pretty easy question. What then shall I do with Jesus? To help answer this question, let's consider another question. And the question is, what has Jesus offered you? What has Jesus offered me? Now, Jesus has provided the chance for an abundant life filled with true peace. Now, before we go through this, I would like to read a story. Before we go further with our lesson, I have a story. I don't know if I've uh, if you've heard of this story before, but I would like to read this story for us this morning. Now, the story was told by a name, man named Guy Dowd. And this is how the story goes. Danny was born with no ears. He could hear all right, but he didn't have ears like normal people. All his life, Danny endured ridicule and rejection because of his deformity. But he learned to live with it. Thankfully, he has to, his doctor told him of a few procedure that made it possible to transplant ears from one person to another. That meant Danny could get new ears if someone who was compatible to him ever donated ears or theirs. This was exciting news. After all, people donated body parts all the time hearts, lungs, kidneys, but Danny soon found that donor ears were extremely scarce. Danny didn't give up hope, however. He knew that someday he would get new ears. He graduated from high school with honors and was accepted at a major university thousands of miles away. He kissed his parents goodbye and began his life as a college student. And again, Though he found it hard to make friends and fit in because of his ears, 
because of his ears, sorry. One day he got a phone call from his father. Go to the hospital tomorrow, Danny. A donor has been found. The very next day, Danny checked into the, the university hospital where doctors were ready to perform the surgery. Sorry, I missed. Okay, so a few hours later, Danny had new ears. When the bandages came off, Danny gazed into the mirror for hours. He finally had ears like normal people. For the first time in his life, he wasn't ashamed of the way he looked. He not only had new ears, he had a new life now. A few weeks later, Danny received another phone call from his father. Son, your mother is very ill. His father said, she may not leave through the night. Then he was on the first plane home. When he arrived, his father gave him the sad news that his mother had died. Together, they went to the funeral home where Danny was able to see his mother for the last time. He leaned over to kiss his, her cheek, brushing her hair back from her face. She noticed that she had no ears. It was a mother's incredible love that provided Danny with new ears. And it was a father's incredible love that provides us with new life, friends. So that is the, the end of that story. Let's continue on with our lesson. Now I want you to keep in mind and picture the story. Going back to the question, what has Jesus offered you and me? Jesus has provided the chance for an abundant life filled with true peace. Jesus has provided the chance for salvation for each and every one of us to enjoy cleansing from sin through his blood. I remembered when uh, I was young, I was, I was a small boy, my grandfather would tell me this story. And I believe this story is, is also written in the, uh, the book, written by something here. Eric B. Hare. Eric B. Hare uh, is about uh, a paramount chief in the islands of Fiji. He was one of the chief, uh, big chiefs uh, that uh, gave his a piece of land that we have the Fiji mission of Seventh-day Adventist headquarters. We still have that property today. He was that chief. Uh, it was said that he was a drunk, and you know he was a, he used to be a cannibal, and so but he became a Christian and an Adventist. And when he became an Adventist, these men uh, came and was sitting one one night uh, or one day, one Sabbath day, Sabbath morning, sorry, with Pastor Fulton. And this man uh, was going to have foot washing with another, with another Fijian man that was sitting there. And the Fijian man was kind of paralyzed on one leg up um, from... Uh, we have this traditional ceremony that we have in, back in those days where when a chief is... Um, when a chief has built his or her house, they would, uh, the, all the corners, the four corners of the house, the post, they would dig a big hole and they would put live human beings in the hole. And this would be the sacrifice for the, the chief's house. And they would, they would pile up rocks as the foundation of these huge you know, uh, houses, traditional houses, way up high. Some are like 15, 20 feet high. They would build these huge traditional houses. And they would line people at the bottom and crush them with rocks. Alive, crush them to their death. And when a, a paramount chief uh, has, uh, when people have already finished building the, the daggered canoes, they would use a daggered canoe for the chief. They would use live human beings to put under the, the canoe and they would roll the canoe over the, the live human beings. 
and that would be a traditional sacrifice. This man was one of those men. He was paralyzed because he was one of the only person who lived from that. And the canoe crushed one side of him, and that was why he was paralyzed one, on one leg. That morning, they were going to have communion. And Pastor Fulton said, he was teaching them the, the communion, and he told the high chief that now he has to go and wash the feet of these men. As soon as the, the chief stood, the men started crawling to one side of the, of the house, of the building, of the church that they were in. And as the chief moved closer, he said, I cannot, my chief, I cannot, you cannot wash my feet. That is not acceptable. So the chief went and bowed his knee. He was in tears. He was crying and he said, and he started to apologize to this man about, apologized for the things that he has done you know, regarding the tradition. And he said, you know, if Jesus, the almighty God has, has done it, can save us or can give his life or his son to come down to die on the cross for me, then I believe I can also bend my knees to wash and touch your feet. You know, friends, Jesus has offered us salvation. Jesus has offered us salvation. Life, a new beginning. To enjoy cleansing from sins through his blood. Jesus has proclaimed the conditions and we must believe in him. And we must believe in him. You know, later on, continuing that story, a couple of months later, a yacht was in the, one of the harbors. And a man came out. And, and see this group of men with the chief. They were making an, an underground oven. A traditional underground, they call it an um. They were making an oven. And the man start saying, and they, well, you guys are Christians, had this conversation with the chief. The chief was just sitting there, and, and the man starts saying that, uh, you know, how, why does the chief want to be a Christian? He said, you Christians, um, you know, you say that you worship an almighty God that is rich and powerful, but look at you. You live in a small thatched house full with leaves, full of leaves, and, you know, you, you're eating from an oven dug out in the ground. And he was saying all sorts of things. And he said, look at me. I don't believe in God. I'm an atheist. But I have a nice boat. I've been traveling all over the world. After he had shared, you know, whatever the, the atheist was saying regarding how terrible it is to be a Christian, the chief said, Mr. Mr. Person who do not believe in God. He said, you look over there, you see that, that oom, that, that oven in the dirt. He said, if it wasn't for this Jesus that I worship that has saved my life, instead of that long pig in that oom, you will be in there. <laughs> you know, Jesus has offered us salvation. Jesus has proclaimed the conditions that we must believe in him, that we must repent from our sins, that we must confess our faith before men. It is important to confess our faith, and I believe that we have been studying this from last quarter, and also this quarter in our Sabbath school lesson discussion, how important it is to share our faith or to confess our faith to the people who do not believe or who do not fully understand who God is. Matthew chapter 10 verse 32. 32 to 33. Matthew chapter 10 verse 32 to 33 says, Therefore, 
Whoever confesses me before men, him will I also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father is in heaven. We must confess our faith before men, friends. We must be baptized for the remission of our sins. We must remain faithful even to death. My question this morning, if God calls you to your grave this afternoon, do you know for sure that you will be part of God's kingdom? If God calls you this afternoon to your rest, do you know for sure that you will be part of, God, of God's kingdom? We must be faithful even to death. Friends, Jesus has predetermined the alternatives. Reject him and we will die in our sins to face the terrible consequences. Believe in him and we receive everlasting life. Reject him, and we will die in our sins to face the terrible consequences. Believe in him, and we receive everlasting life. Having considered what Jesus has offered us, we return to our original question. What will you do with Jesus? What will you do with Jesus? What some have tried to do, Matthew chapter 27, verse 24. This is what some have tried to do. Matthew 27, 24. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of, his, of, this, of this just person. You see to it. Pilate tried to pass the choice on to others. You know, many times as Christians or as Seventh-day Adventists, we make many excuses. Uh, being born and raised in the church, I know that Adventists know the, the, the Bible and are very good in defending themselves and explaining things here and there. And making excuses for sharing the gospel, you know, passing the choice or the witness to others. Are we guilty of doing something similar today? Trying to let others decide for us what we will do or believe about Jesus. You know, last week's lesson, uh, lesson a Sabbath school lesson discussion, uh, talks about the fact that um, you know that we should go out and witness. Yeah, that when you go a step out in faith and share the gospel, in return your faith grows. If you do not step out and witness for God, you will not grow. Your faith will dwindle and then just die so sharing and witnessing is very very important trying to let others decide for us what we will do or believe about jesus is not a very wise thing some in athens simply mocked acts chapter 17 verse 32 acts chapter 17 verse 32 says and when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, while others said, We will hear you again on this matter. Many take this route in what they do with Jesus, rather than make the effort to decide what they should do, they simply laugh. Yeah? And this, these are some of the, the points that I find is what people try to do when trying to answer this question, what will you do with Jesus? Like Pilate, some try to pass the choice. Trying to let others decide 
will, will or will they not believe in Jesus? Some, like the people in Athens, they just sit by and laugh. Rather than making the effort. Felix, in Acts chapter 24, verse 25, tried to wait for a more convenient time. Let me read about Felix. Acts chapter 24, verse 25. This is an interesting one. This is what Felix said. Now as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, Go away for now. When I have a convenient time, I will call for you. This is another common reaction. Hoping that through delay, they will not have to come to make the choice. But we cannot escape the fact that we will one day be judged by him. Acts chapter 17 verse 30 to 31. Acts chapter 17 verse 30 to 31. This is what it says. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked. But now commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the men whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of these to all by raising him from the dead. Let's look at what we should do. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 9. Hebrews chapter 5 Verse 9 says, And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. What we should do? Accept his gracious offer of salvation by obeying him. You know, I, I believe that most of us seated here this morning have already been baptized. You know, when you said yes to Jesus and followed him uh, through the, in the waters of baptism does not only mean that you're saying yes to Jesus, stop there in the pool of baptism. Saying yes to Jesus is something that you do every single day that you live. Every moment of your life, you say yes to Jesus. Become his disciples and committed to doing what he commanded. And you can find that in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20. You grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Walk in him, well established in the faith. Develop the mind of Christ, the attitude of sacrifice and service. Now friends, I believe that our lesson this morning is basically a reminder for each and every one of us that the path we are taking, which has led us here this morning to listen to God's word, is the right path. You are on the right path. Just keep on at it. Keep praying. Keep committing your lives to Jesus. He is coming soon. Amen. We have seen the, the feeble attempt by Pilate and others to answer the question, what then shall I do with Jesus? Let us not think we can answer the question by simply ignoring him. Simply not doing anything actively against him. For as Jesus said on another occasion, he who is not with me abroad is against me. Jesus has given us every reason to accept and obey him as our Savior and Lord. If you have not yet done so, will you not today respond to his gracious invitation to receive eternal life? I believe, friends, standing here today, that Jesus is coming very soon. I know that it's kind of old. Thinking back when I was, uh, again, a little boy, I would go with my grandparents to these Bible studies. You know, I would be sitting, I would be sleeping in church. Sometimes, many times on the floor, you know, just waiting, getting tired. I just want to go back home. Uh, even on a school night, my grandparents would drag me all the way to church. And this is like a wooden, wooden church. And the floor is always cold. You're lying on the floor. It's dusty. 
um, barefoot. I'm always lying on the floor. I got so tired. And growing up, that is one of the main things I've always heard in my family, in worship, you know, go to, going to church, having family worship. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. I got, at one point, I got so tired of it. But now, as I am sitting back and reading the news, comparing it to what the Bible is saying and seeing how things are turning out, I truly believe that Jesus is coming. Amen. And I've tried to challenge myself that even if Jesus does not come in my lifetime, I should at least try to treat it like Jesus is coming in my lifetime and get ready for his coming. You know, anything can happen. Um, we have many different kinds of problems today, issues uh, in the world today. And many, many people are so afraid that, you know, that anything can happen. And uh, the only hope I can see is Jesus. And I am blessed this morning to be able to share this message with each and every one of you, church family, and to encourage you or encourage each other to continue on in this faith, continue on to pray. Uh, I was video calling one of my cousins yesterday, and he works in the railway in, in Sydney, Australia. Uh, he is not actively attending church, this cousin of mine. So as we were having a video, he, I saw him started laughing in, in our video call. And I asked him, hey, what's going on? And he said, oh, hey, my aunt from Queensland just sent me a message. And, and he said, what is the message? And he said, oh, he sent me uh, a picture of this uh, um, vegetarian pie. And he said, what kind of pie is that? And he said, oh, he, he said that some of the ingredients is like uh, porridge, oatmeal. He said, man, I've never tasted anything like that. And, and he said he was making fun of his aunt for eating such a thing. And uh, the, the, the aunt wrote him and told him, you know, we Adventists, we are eating healthy because, you know, we're looking forward to the kingdom. And so he replied and said, you know, those who are um, called first, the first will be last and the last shall be first. And then he had a good laugh about it. And, you know, that kind of got stuck in my head in our conversation, even after that. That's the, that what he mentioned. He said, oh, the first will be, just remember, he told his aunt, just remember, the first will be last and the last shall be first. Kind of challenged me as I was reading our lesson uh, to share today, to remember that God has called me here and I should never be, you know, the last. God has called me to be the first. I should remain the first. And I challenge you, church members, my church family, remain the first. Jesus has given us every reason to accept this salvation. Continue walking in that faith. It is my prayer that God will richly bless our short lesson this morning. Shall we close our eyes for a word of prayer? To the most holy place in heaven, our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the lesson that I just preached or shared this morning, Father. I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will interpret the meaning or the lessons that we just shared with each other. And I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will allow us or will enable us to get something get a lesson out of it and apply it into our lives. We know, Father, the signs that you have, that are written in the Bible, in your word, is coming true. We see it fulfilled everywhere around us in the world today. 
And we know, Father, that you are about to come and we want to prepare our lives. We want to be ready for your coming. And Father, I pray that you will touch each and every single person, your children that are here this morning, and even those who are not able to make it. Father, I pray that you will bless each and every one of them, that you will lift the burdens off their shoulders and enable them, Father, to be, to be good witnesses, to put themselves out there to share about you to the people who need to know about you, Father. Father, I pray that you will give us the courage to stand boldly and share about you in our, through our actions and in our words, Father, that we will be witnesses for you. I pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to strengthen each and every one of us as we walk the faith that you have given to us. And Father, thank you for your love and thank you for always listening and answering our prayers. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.